so um, we'll look deeper into that next weekend. I'm so looking for stuff. Please pray for a speaker. Also, I um, want to direct your attention to the Children's Festival for Festival at the end of this month. We have a fall festival every year, and we were um, wondering how it would happen this year with all the pandemic and stuff like that. So, um, um, Charles Pastor has made the decision to do it outdoors in the parking lot. And uh, if you haven't contacted the pastor me already, um, you should if you want to participate, if your kid wants to participate. This will be, this year will be extra fun. If you also have uh, friends or guests you would like to invite, uh, as an evangelistic opportunity, you can. Uh, you can talk to Pastor May about safety precautions and we'll do it the right way, uh, in a holy way. So, um, have that in mind, and please pray for our uh, events on the next weekend and the weekend after that. So, uh, those are the two announcements. Um, and after the, uh, our Bible study time today, uh, I will join in in your Zoom group to update you on the building situation. So, I'll some updates on that as well. Alright, let's open up the Word of God this morning from the Book of Acts as we go into further into the story of Holy Spirit. And the passage of scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 46. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 46. And I read these passages for us. Uh, please open your Bibles if you can, if you if it is available. If you only have Bibles on your app, it's kind of hard to see right? <laughs> As you're watching, but uh, maybe you can have another Bible in, in hand. So we can honor the Lord as we worship uh, with His book open. Not only in our hands, but in our hearts as well. I'll read Acts chapter 10, verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. And for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism 
Autism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him, and he and we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him in to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who are, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone without water for baptism these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. Amen. This is the word of God. God is good all the time. Amen. And God thinks all, makes all things beautiful in his time. Amen to that as well. We, we hold, hardly agree to the fact that God is beautiful. But can we also agree, and I know you do agree, that the world is unfair. There is inequality in the world. In all the goodness of God's creation, there is also sin in our lives. And we have to admit the world is a very unfair place. Oh, is that hypocrisy not actually say those kind of things of church? 
the social injustice and racial discrimination. Uh, these days we see people trying to take down these Columbus statues. And um, they vandalize, you know, the red paint on the, on the statue. And they try to change the law, they try to change education so that people could be more equal. The race could be more equal. This discrimination could be could be um uh, 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 could be in vain. Could What's so hard? Can be destroyed. Uh, but I want to ask you a question. As we destroy statues and change laws and educate people, does that really bring equality in the races? Do we, is there really no discrimination after as we educate our people and get rid of, you know, the bad things in history? Is that the solution? It's been 160 years since the slave was abolished from the U.S. Hundreds of years, you would thought, you would think that we would learn something, and we did, right? Things have changed a lot in our society, in our country. You know, there's more equality than ever before, that's true. But as we hear the news of George Floyd, and all these riots and movements this year, we realize that we are, there's a far long way to go still. There is no racial equality in people's hearts, in their nature. People don't like each other. They put down the other race. Regardless of how much you make in it to war, people's hearts don't change. There is the prejudice against a, 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 a specific type of people. And we come to the conclusion that the only answer to racial discrimination is Jesus Christ. Amen? Only the gospel is the answer for all of us. If you and I, who are weak, 